Good morning and welcome to Friday morning prayer on a very blustery, windy, Cumbrian morning. And it's good to welcome our dear Jan and those who've not logged in on our live stream channel. And we welcome all our friends on our Facebook page. So as we begin, we light our candle and we light it this morning for universal unity and peace. And we share it obviously on day 17 of our 40 day novena of prayers for the Frank Clara Abbeys, but we share it with all the emergency services here in England, especially in the south and north from here, where many of the motorways are still closed due to severe snowfall, and of course storm emma so we pray father mother god we call upon you this morning and all we ask is the fresh outpouring of your spirit into all our hearts so that we can continue to praise your name and to give you thanks for the abundance from your hand amen and good welcome, dear brother Kaj, oh, and our dear sister Eleanor. Good to know that you're here with us. And thank you for your lovely email and your card. And welcome, dear brother John, in southern England. Good to have you with us. So we begin by ringing our little bells for unity and peace and for the emergency services here in the UK. And as we begin our Friday morning prayers, we read the prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai, as we say together, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure, and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. And Friday morning we commune with the angel of air, saying, angel of air, enter my lungs and give the air of life to my whole body. As we say these words, we contemplate on the atmosphere around us, as we connect with the rhythm of our breathing. So now, in the stillness of this moment, having lit our candles, we just come into the presence of God. We come with our many requests, we come in our brokenness, in our woundedness, in celebration of all God's blessings on all here. And our opening prayer is from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona. And this morning we read, I awake this morning in the presence of the holy angels of God. May heaven open wide before me, above me and around me, that I may see the Christ of my love and his sunlit company in all the things of earth this day. And our hymn this morning is from Sing Your Faith from our Unitarian brothers and sisters. And it's hymn number 213, where science serves and art inspires. Where science serves and art inspires a struggling humankind their truth and beauty point to God's horizons of the mind. 
where joys are shared and fears which once lay hid in lives apart. Their love unlocks the doors on God's horizons of the heart where mind and heart together trust the one who makes life whole, their faith reveals in splendor God's horizons of the soul. O God, bring far horizons near, complete the search begun, so what we see and dream and what we do by grace are one. And that's by Jane Manton Marshall, born in 1924. That's a lovely hymn. And now, our first reading this morning is from the little booklet, The United Christian Broadcasts. And for Friday the 2nd of March, we continue with part three Secrets of Self-Control, and the author guides us to a reading from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 12. The grace of God teaches us to say no. So we read on, talk back to your feelings. We put far too much emphasis on our feelings. We think everything has to feel good or it's not worthwhile. We say things like, I don't feel like studying. I don't feel like working. I don't feel like reading my Bible. Or I feel like having another drink. I feel like sleeping until noon. Don't give your feelings so much authority. Feelings are highly unreliable. If you allow them, they will control and manipulate you. God does not want you to be controlled by your feelings. He wants you to master your moods. With Christ as the master of your life, you can master your feelings. Talk back to them. God says he wants you to learn how to challenge your emotions. The grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives. God's grace gives you the power to do what's right. It gives you the ability to say no to that feeling to that desire, to that impulse. Are you battling a weight problem? Before you ever walk into the kitchen and open the refrigerator door, you have already begun to talk to yourself about eating. If you are serious, you will have to challenge some of those subconscious attitudes about food. When you hear your mind saying, I just have to have a snack or I'll die, you have to say, no, I'm not going to die. In fact, I will be healthier if I don't have a snack. Bottom line, God, God's supernatural power can help you to master your moods, your thoughts, and your desires. That's quite an interesting reading. Back in the novitiate, when I was a novice in the nursing order that I joined in 1966, in 1967, we had a lovely young man come from Gibraltar. And he was an amazing character because he lived his monastic training through his feelings. He was very demonstrative with his hands. And he would always, if he didn't feel good, he would tell you he wouldn't pray. And if he felt good, he was so manic 
that we all had a headache and avoided him like hot coals. But he was a character and we loved him. But he was all feely, 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 feely. So if he didn't feel like praying to God, he wouldn't. He closed down and he would, effect, he would have a face on him that didn't resemble God's peace or joy. And so it is in our own journey. There are times in my journey where it's an effort to pray. And it's not because I feel I don't want to pray. It's just that we have these days where everything is an effort even prayer. So what's the antidote? Just say to God, Lord, I don't feel strong enough to be able to sit in your company and read or meditate. So will you accept how I'm feeling as a prayer? And then you suddenly find a lightness. It's as if God has heard your prayer. You may be sometimes struggling in your prayer time. You may be feeling disheartened or despondent. You may be in pain. You may be low in mood, depressed. Bless them and just give them to God as your best prayer. And suddenly you find God's inner peace. That's just a reflection from my own journey. I pray it helps yours. Just excuse me. I'm going to do a Sister Eleanor now. I need some coffee. I need a sip of something. Thank you. And Psalms now is a beautiful modern version of the Psalms composed and edited by the Reverend Leslie Brandt. It's a wonderful book. It brings the Old Testament Psalms into a modern language that we can connect with. And this morning it's Psalm 103, page 162, if you have the book. My heart is bursting with praises to God. Every fiber of my being reaches out in rejoicing. How can I ever forget his many blessings? He forgives all my sins. He touches my afflictions with healing. He snatches me back from the gaping jaws of hell. He covers me with concern and love. He fulfills my deepest desires and gives me meaning for life and a purpose for living. God is a God of justice and judgment, but he is on the side of those who need help. He is angry with those who persistently rebel against him, but he pours out his love upon those who turn to him. He does not give us our just deserts or pay us what we well deserve. He is grieved when we so miserably fail, but he quickly draws us to his forgiving heart and accepts us just as it never happened. He looks with tenderness upon his faltering children he knows and understands our fallible natures. Man by himself is a pitiful picture of weakness. Now and then, one will, like a streaking meteor, blaze out across the skies of time, only to become a smoking cinder at the end of his short journey. But those who tie on to God's loving will and purposes become the objects of his eternal mercy and righteousness. Rejoice with me, 
you who are invisible servants, and you who hear and obey his voice. Shout his praises, you who are his children, and you who serve as his ministers, priests, and monastics. There is no time for despair and discouragement, whoever and wherever you are. Lift your hearts in praises to God. I love that psalm because it's a psalm of hope and it reiterates what I was sharing earlier. We may not feel like praying to God. I know I didn't this morning at 5 a.m. because I think I overdid it a bit yesterday laying the floorboards with Brother Rob in my bedroom because I was sinking into the old floorboards. And I think with all the bending and the pushing and shoving, I realized I'm not 21, I'm nearly 70. And it wasn't until this morning when I came to sit down to pray, I thought, oh, I think I'll stand. And then I suddenly found myself nodding off, standing up. And then I could get irritable, and I was getting irritable. So in the end, I just said, Lord, this is an uncomfortable process. Can I give you my irritability, my discomfort and my pain? Will you use it as a prayer? And then I felt good. I felt comfortable and I could sit and relax. And the best prayer is the prayer that St. Francis guides us to use. Just sit in the presence of God. That's the hardest prayer. Just sit and just be mindful that God is with you. Just sit in his presence and allow his love enfold you. Give all the reading and the words a holiday. Just come as you are, the beautiful child of God, and just sit there and just be aware that God is with you. The listening prayer, I find the best prayer. It's more efficacious. It has a lot of power. And it takes a lot of effort for us to calm the mind, to allow the heart be open, and to let the heart embrace the heart of Christ. Because silence is the language of God's love. Let us be still now as we come to a form, oh, I'm just guided to pick up the little book of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. It's a tiny little book. And I'm guided to just open it randomly. Compassion reaches out to all. Compassion compels us to reach out to all living beings, including our so-called enemies those people who upset or hurt us. Irrespective of what they do to you, if you remember that all beings like you are only trying to be happy, you will find it much easier to develop compassion toward them. Compassion is a sign of inner strength. Compassion is by nature peaceful and gentle, but it is also very powerful. And now for some of our intercessions from the peace prayers from the world religions by the Reverend Roger Granger. And the theme this morning is homecomings. From the Psalms of the Old Testament, we read in Psalm 63, verse 7, I sing for joy in the shadow of your protecting wings. I sing for joy in the shadow 
of your protecting wings. From the Sikh tradition, even if I have gone astray, I am thy child, O God. Thou art my father and mother. And from the Yashna of the Zoroastrian religion, we pray for homeless people throughout the world. We pray for exiles and asylum seekers. We pray for people whose spiritual journey leads them far from home. We pray for wanderers who cannot find rest. We pray for those who have shown us kindness and made us welcome. So may we be like those making the world refresh toward perfection. May Ahura Mazda, Lord of Light, help us and guide our efforts through truth. For a thinking man is where wisdom is at home. And from the Christian tradition, from the Gospel of Luke chapter 15, verse 24, this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. And I connect with that because I too was lost after my mental breakdown 22, three years ago. And God never gave up on me. So why would he give up on you? The son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. Beautiful. Well, let us come now into the presence of God. Let us just be still as we sit in the presence of God and just allow the love of God touch our hearts. Thank you. 
Let us come now, my dear friends, for you were called by God as God's ambassadors for unity and peace. So let us come into the presence of the Lord God and let us allow the King of Peace, the Good Shepherd, come and lay his healing hands on each and every one of us here. So let us just be mindful that we are in the presence of Christ. He is here, and he's here to comfort you. He's here to take your burdens from you. But are you willing to share them? Whatever is troubling you, be it in your mind, in your body, or on this sacred journey, name it. Bless it and now release it to Christ, the incarnate Son of God. And we do that with that mindset of gratitude, knowing that our prayers are heard and that the Lord Christ will deliver each one of us and bring us back to that inner center in our heart wherein we will hear God's voice a voice of peace of love of acceptance and a love underpinned by God's truth so spend this time now sharing with the Lord your God of how you truly feel and let his healing love empower you now take back your power from your feelings and just come and sit in his presence and just embrace his love And in our morning intercessions, we add Sister Sue, son James, and also our dear friend Kathy and Wilf, both terminal. For our dear sister Jan, we remember her brother Lawrence, but her dear friend Sonia with multiple brain tumors. We pray for the brothers and sisters of our own community, both past and present members, and this morning, it's such a joy to have our dear sister Eleanor with us. So we remember dear Eleanor, who's been unwell, but who's coming through a pretty challenging period in her journey. And we thank the Lord for laying his healing hands on Eleanor and upon sister Elizabeth with her chronic back pain. We prayed this morning for Brother Brian, for Brother Paul, and for Sister Meredith. We pray for Krista and her friend Gabrielle in Roundup in Montana. We pray for all God's children who are struggling in their ministry, professional or family life. And we remember especially those who've emailed me for prayer. Let me share with you. We pray for Morna Murray for her son Matthew. We pray for our dear sister Helen Francis for her nephew Anthony who took a drug overdose and is still in intensive care. And we pray for our friend Tony, a young man veterinary surgeon I think who's only got six months to live we pray for our dear sisters Magdalena and Rita and their personal health issues we remember Agnes her daughter Kim 
who went missing. We pray for a safe return. I pray for Wendy and her dear mom who's got mental health issues. But we pray for Wendy's brothers and sisters to show compassion to their mom. We pray for our dear Polly, a member of the Iona community, for her brother-in-law David, and for her sister Liz. And we pray for Jimmy, who's got a painful right hip. We pray for my dear friend Bernie, Bernadette, in Lancashire, who's now terminal. And we pray for those of you who've joined us here on our Facebook page. <clears throat> Brother Catch, we pray for you and dear Paula, Sister Paula, and for your son, Lucas, and your eldest son, Marcus. We pray for our dear brother, John, who's with us this morning. We pray for dear Agnes, the twin sister of our dear brother, John, in Belfast, Agnes is in Germany and we pray for Agnes and all her own personal issues. We pray for Anna Marie who's with us, for Beverly Peterson. We pray for dear Joyce and Magdalena saying, I ask a prayer for all people who suffer from loneliness and who feel abandoned. A good request. And for Beverly Peterson, for dear Michael, we pray for Joanne Dunn. I found you, I did a course with you 10 years ago in Glasgow. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you, Joanne. How wonderful, 10 years ago. Lovely to have you with us. For Karen Lyons. Oh, thank you, Karen. I pray you're okay this morning. Uh, and dear Eleanor, you've been through such a lot over the years as a nurse, but you've always risen above it. And you have a great awareness of prayer and a great love for Christ as his bride, having taken your life vows on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. So we pray with you, dear Eleanor, because when a child of God is suffering, the whole family of God suffers. And we mustn't forget the people of, Saudi, of Syria, especially the elderly, the young people, the children, who've been maimed with the incessant bombings from Russia and Syria. Their own, their own government are performing chemical genocide on their own people. It breaks your heart to think that God's children can do such horrible things, but they do, because we all have a choice, free will, to live a simple good life or to be an out and out whatever. So I thank God for each one of you here, and I praise and thank God for all our religious leaders, for Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch, head of the Anglican Church <clears throat> here and abroad. I pray for His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Thich Nhat I pray too for His Holiness Pope Francis. I pray for all the men and women of all different beliefs who hear the call of their God of many names and none, and to dedicate their life to their God for the children of God. We pray for those who are homeless living in these Arctic conditions here in the UK. We pray for the housebound, the vulnerable and the elderly who rely on their support worker or district nurse. We pray for our amazing emergency services and our mountain rescue teams who've been trying to rescue many hundreds of people stranded on motorways 
up and down the country. But we mustn't forget the prisoners on death row and those who are incarcerated in our prisons worldwide. Let us now embrace the healing touch of Christ by inviting him in, by invoking him, and by surrendering our heart to a loving God. Let us now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here at this hour our daily bread. Forgive us our disobedience, our unwillingness to hear your voice, to respect that voice and to follow it. Forgive us for the times when we've procrastinated and allow negative thoughts in our mind take away God's inner peace. Protect us from the vitriolic forces of the Antichrist. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I have a little prayer here from Prayers for Peace by the late Cardinal Basil Hume and the late Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Robert Runcy. And, bear with me, ah, it's from Desmond Tutu. When you look at someone with eyes of love, you see a reality different from that of someone who looks at the same person without love, with hatred or even just with indifference. He's a good man. And now for our final prayer on day 17 of our Novena of 40 Days Prayer for the Franklara Abbeys in America here and in Finland. And this was given by the Holy Spirit to our dear sister Mary in Michigan. And we remember sister Mary and our dear husband Mike, who's been really despondent. I, sister Mary in Christ Jesus, believe so lack of finances for the Franciscan sanctuaries of hope be you removed in the name of Jesus, Father, Mother, God, we come to you in praise and thanksgiving for the dream you gave to our founder, your dream of a Franciscan sanctuary of hope. We pray it will be sanctuaries of hope with a warm heart, an open mind to call all people out of darkness and lead them to the divine spirit, a sanctuary of hope that heals hurt lives and helps all people, a sanctuary of hope that leads all in the way of the peace of St. Francis and Clare of Assisi to serve Father Mother God, the poor and marginalized, a century of hope that knows no division of culture, class or race, a century of hope that embraces the vision of Jesus and St. Francis to embrace all beliefs and none. A sanctuary of hope that welcomes brothers and sisters of different faith communities dedicating their lives and their hearts as lay monastics embracing Celtic Franciscan spirituality. A sanctuary of hope of the masters for the people, high as the ideals of Jesus and low as the humblest human. A loving sanctuary of hope and friendship to the animal kingdom and a century of hope that inspires courage for this life and hope for the life to come let us pray we put this in the hands of our father mother god in the hope that saint francis and claire will be there for us 
And from scripture we read two quotes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 and 10. When summer returns and the roses are again in bloom, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. That is a beautiful prayer and we thank the Holy Spirit. And now for a Celtic blessing. Forgive me, I need another sip of my coffee. And I dedicate this to you. May there be peace within your soul this beautiful day. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith, hope and love. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing that you are a child of God, a co-creator of the Divine One. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, to dance, to praise and to love. It is there for each and every one of you. May the God of strength be with you, holding you in strong fingered hands. May you be a sacrament of his strength to those whose hands you hold today. And may the blessing of strength be upon you. And as I blow out this light, I thank the Lord Christ, our teacher, our brother, our friend and mentor, who is the incarnate Son of God, for reaching out and for touching your heart and for filling you with God's peace, because you are God's ambassadors for unity and peace. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace from the Son of Peace, from the Queen of Peace, become your peace today. And may God reward each one of you here for giving up your free time to join this old monk as God's ambassadors for unity and peace. If it's your bedtime, sleep well. And I know it is for Sister Eleanor, because it's 20 to 4 in the morning in Philadelphia. Bless your heart. And for the rest of us, I pray that today will be the first day of the rest of your life. Live it to the full, because God only gives us one day at a time. So enjoy it. Be happy. Amen.